um, I continue my <coughs> my commentary of the Zizek Peterson debate. I'll put the link to the first three videos, and uh, I'm commenting Zizek. He says that um, in the, the Christian view, um, there are no longer Jews and Greeks, no longer males and females in Christ. Uh, but what Zizek doesn't understand is that Hegel is a Christian thinker. And the one could say by imitating Chesterton that the modern world is full of Hegelian ideas gone insane. But what we call insanity is a moment in the process of the development of rationality as Hegel understands it. So the, the idea of, of promoting race mixing is an attempt to to erase the differences between ethnic groups within the realm of nature. So it's, it's a, a Hegelian ID. And, and the transgender LGBT um, programs, they are the same. It's an attempt to, to realize the ideal of the platonic androgynous being, the primordial uh, <clears throat> human who was both male and female so uh, the world the modern world at least in the West is full of Hegelian ideas uh, 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 equality inequality there are categories of Hegel's logic identity and difference um, the, 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 the attempt to transcend opposites uh, yeah he says that freedom and responsibility hurt, that they require an effort. Freedom for Hegel means to be uh, equal with the other through a cognitive process, that spirit shall recognize itself everywhere on earth. And that's, that's very difficult because spirit has to recognize itself in the most... Uh, in the most um, <clears throat> unpleasant uh, places in the world. Uh, the purpose of a master, according to Zizek, is to awaken us to our freedom. And um, my master, my intellectual master, is Hegel. Uh, and his philosophy is an attempt to to realize freedom by giving the mind the, the cognitive tools to equalize itself with the whole world by recognizing itself uh, everywhere in the world and uh, yeah he says that 20th century capitalism fa uh, no 20th century failed because capitalism won but that's a, a communist viewpoint from the point of view of the right uh, capitalism uh, won the the cold war but lost the, the cultural war in the sense that uh, cultural marxism is dominant throughout the west and that uh, uh, the Western world, from, a, from an economic standpoint, is becoming more and more socialized with ever more regulations and, and, and restrictive laws and taxations and an ever uh, more uh, important grip onto every aspect of, of social, political and, and, and legislative life on every citizen. And in the cultural sphere, leftist ideas have triumphed all over the, the Western world. The left is, is dominant throughout the Western world and this position of dominance in a dialectical fashion creates its own opposite and that's why we, we witness the rise of 
conservatism, libertarianism, the alt-right, the far-right, etc., etc. That's a, a dialectical process because something dialectically brings forth its own opposite. Uh, he says that there are antagonisms within capitalism. There are antagonisms within God himself. Uh, says that we are confronted with an ecological crisis, uh, the development of techno-science with biogenetics, with new forms of apartheid. Apartheid is considered to be negative because it is a refusal to identify with the whole of society. So it's negative in the sense that it is differentiation, separation, negation. But at the same time, it enables those who live in, in closed communities to find a sense of belonging and identity. So it's ambiguous because the leftists blame apartheid as being evil, but they themselves live in a cognitive and social apartheid. That's what uh, the English call gentrification. They live among themselves. The, the high bourgeois class live uh, in, 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 in their own sphere. That's what the bell curve by Charles Murray and Richard Einstein, uh, Einstein explains, that the, the cognitive elites live in a world of their own and that they shape unconsciously the life of, of the majority of the population and that the, the middle class is, is, is torn apart between the underclass and the upper class and um, both these uh, extremes make the life of the middle class very difficult. So, yeah. Uh, he says, he repeats his very famous idea that um, we must dialectically negate Marx because Marx says that Philosophers have tried to change the world, uh, have tried to interpret the world, and now it's time to change it. And Zizek says that uh, in the 20th century, uh, we have tried uh, too much to, uh, to change the world. Now it's time to interpret the world. He doesn't understand that he's the, the Marxist dialectical negation of Marx. And, uh, yeah, uh, he says that we live in one and the same world, which is more and more interconnected, nonetheless deeply divided. Uh, that's a definition of God. For Hegel, God is the totality of being uh, in which every determination is in a, a logical, reciprocal determination with all other determination. And as Spinoza says, Omnis determinatio negatio est, which means every determination, because it it negates being and sets a limit, a boundary within being, and, and what is determined is what is limited by its other, its non-being. And uh, that's why God is a totality which contains negation within himself. And uh, the world is a, is a mirror image of God. Uh, yeah, he talks about Congo and Yemen and Saudi Arabia. And from an abstract point of view, I know that the, the state of things in these countries is interconnected with the state of, of political, economic and social life in all other countries. Because of this economic, social and political interconnectedness of every, every things. Um... He mentions Bill Gates and George Soros who promote LGBT and that's a, again a dialectical twist in the sense that when the billionaires or the rich uh, reach a certain level of power and economic wealth, their consciousness, their, their morality changes and they become philanthropists and they, they help the poor and, and the refugees and the migrants and those in need and the oppressed. So, 
God has implemented within the mind of, of the privileged a will to help the underprivileged. Uh, that's not optimal, but that's uh, an attempt to bring balance to the world because uh, the white Western world, which is economically privileged, has spent billions of, 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 of dollars or, or euros or whatever in, in, in sending food and medicine and, and help and, 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 and tools for education and knowledge and, and technology to, to, to most parts of the world. So uh, white privilege creates its own dialectical opposite by, by bringing about white philanthropy. <sighs> yeah. Uh, he says that we should uh, not reject refugees, but change the global situation, which in his view is mostly economic, which creates uh, massive migrations. So he has a, a holistic view of reality. He understands uh, the, the global economic, political, and social world as an interconnected totality. But in my view, the interconnectedness and, and holistic view of the world is a reflection of the totalitarian, holistic mind of God, which is what Hegel calls the logical ID. And uh, yeah, he says that he stands for communism because there are ecological digital and, and problems and that the world is united and that it can only solve its own problems by uniting and uh, yeah I'm not saying that I am a good guy because I am the negative but I am nonetheless trying to share my knowledge to enlighten others so that they they will be able to 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 understand their position within the world and to, to be enlightened and to to enlighten one another. That's, um, yeah. Uh, he says that within neoliberalism, to which he is opposed, the state plays an ever important role. And in the Western world, uh, the rise of, of, of both leftism and neo, the neoliberal right has promoted the increase, the quantitative increase of regulations, uh, laws, uh, state intervention, the welfare state, the, the, the control of the economy. So um, I made videos about the philosophy of taxation and there's a, a French author, Philippe Nemo, who wrote that when the, the, the quantity, the percentage of, of taxation or, or or um, the, the GDP devoted to, to public expenses reaches a certain limit, which is means a certain measure, uh, the state becomes uh, oppressive in a way. So to say that the West is, is capitalist, uh, it's, it's partly true, but it's partly false also because the economy is controlled by a tremendous amount of regulations and uh, both the left and the right want more regulations, more welfare state, more taxation, more redistribution of, 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 of public wealth. And they, be, they believe that the wealth of, of society belongs to them and, and to the bureaucracy. And um, The, the, the radical leftists, they see neoliberalism everywhere, which is kind of true, but Zizek said that neoliberalism is the state playing a very important role in the entire life of the, of the economy. So, yeah. He talks about the apocalypse, which is uh, the self-revelation of God. And... Uh, Hegel says that in order for, for spirit to be brought to life, that's not an idea that I enjoy, but I know it to be true. Spirit must be, must be torn apart. Yeah. I wrote that 
like I said in a previous video, God is afraid of himself, which is kind of a, a difficult idea to, to accept, but um, <clears throat> um, he says that capitalism is the worst form of economic organization except for all other forms. So if it's the least worst, uh, one could say that it is the best. Uh, maybe that's Peterson speaking here. I, I don't think that's Zizek. That's probably Peterson. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, he says, I don't know who's talking, but that's not important. That up uh, a certain level. And a level is a quantitative de determination, and when a certain level is transcended, we, 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 we reach the level of measure, and a quantitative determination becomes qualitative. The quantity is indifferent to change up to a certain level, that which we call measure, and when the measure is crossed, the quality changes. And the idea is that um, past a certain material um, point, uh, the satisfaction of economic needs uh, prevent the satisfaction of deeper needs in the sense that if you lack the basic economic necessities of life, you suffer. If you have them, you, you are in a, in a state of, of relative satisfaction, but up to a certain point, when you transcend a certain measure, more wealth, more uh, material prosperity seems to bring more happiness, but actually doesn't. And it's a very dialectical process that in the Western world, which is very wealthy, uh, people are addicted to, 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 to medicines and pills and drugs, and, and they are anxious and depressed, and, and they are spiritually miserable and i'm not saying that all oh, the poor are happy and the rich are miserable but in a way the leftists admit this that in some countries which are less prosperous life is harder on a material scale but they have a sense of community and belonging and meaning and the leftists they envy those relatively poorer countries and even the right wing the right wing, the radical right, rejects material prosperity in the name of higher spiritual values, and so does the left. So, whatever your position on the political scale, people are never satisfied. So, that's <clears throat> complicated. Uh, yeah, he mentions uh, equality of opportunity and equality of outcome, but both ideas of equality within the sphere of politics and economics, in order to be implemented, uh, a totalitarian oppressive state must be realized. Because I said it in, I think, the, the second video, uh, if you want equality of opportunity, it means that you have to shape the the education and the environment of every child it means control over the the values and the environment produced by the family control over the schools so the the libertarians claim that neither equality of opportunity nor equality of or outcome are are to be desired because they are impossible and in order to to realize them to make them actual and effective a totalitarian control of the state over society would have to be implemented. So, uh, yeah, I'm here at one hour and 33 minutes and I will stop there and I will continue uh, in the next video.